Bitcoin broke briefly above $31,000 yesterday after the block reported that asset manager giant Fidelity is preparing to file a spot Bitcoin ETF. Or maybe they're planning, who knows, no confirmation, at least from Fidelity. But what does that mean for the market? Well, joining us now to discuss is Maple Head of Growth and Capital Capital Markets, Quinn Thompson. Welcome back, Quinn. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Hey, so, okay. We we see this uh, ETF uh, coming in. Uh, you know, this, this uh, another rumor of an ETF being filed. We we saw the Black, uh, BlackRock uh, iShares uh, ETF filed, um, and a couple of others also too earlier. Uh, you know, Wisdom Tree and 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 the like. So, is this really uh, long term? A, a is this real? The, is this sustainable? Is this thirty thousand dollar level sustainable, or is this just hype? Yeah. So, I mean, the the first Bitcoin ETF has been one of the most anticipated events in the industry for years, and and so if you're in and around the space, you just cannot be underexposed or unexposed going into that potential approval. And now that you have six plus of the major, uh, you know, asset managers managing almost thirty trillion dollars across them. You know, making these filings in the last two weeks, a positive outcome there is is becoming increasingly you know likely. And then on top of that, you've had you know tons of positive headlines over the last month. You know, FTX is state recovering more assets, Celsius reorg, Core Scientific reorg, better minor earnings on the back of of ordinals and lower power costs, and um, a lot of positivity flowing. So, uh, you know, even Jay Powell is uh, adding fuel to the fire. You know, with his his positive comments on crypto and stablecoins. Right. Nonetheless, we, we, we had this uh, this uh, levered ETF come out yesterday, and it, it, it had, let's just say, kind of disappointing uh, volume the first day. It, it, does that give you any reason to say, you know what, okay, so it happens, then what? Is this a situation where you buy the rumor, sell the fact? Yeah, that's a great, uh, great question. I mean, you know, leverage ETFs are, it's, it's quite funny that that gets approved before a spot, you know, you're basically guaranteed to, to lose all your money if you if you hold a leveraged, particularly 2x leverage ETF over time. Um, but, you know, I, I'm debating this question myself, you look at the first gold ETF GLD back uh, approved in November 2004, gold did a 5x in the subsequent seven years after that. And you know, thinking that through a little bit, at the time, gold as, a, as an asset class was was about 15% of total uh, U.S. equities public market cap. Today, Bitcoin's $600 billion, uh, which is about 5% of gold, uh, but but the U.S. stock market cap is about $45 trillion. And so Bitcoin today represents just over 1% of the total, you know, public U.S. equity market. And and so if you think about what, what an ETF does in terms of Giving that stamp of regulatory approval, uh, you know, ushering more and more of the large asset manager, managers in to, by giving them a vehicle to hold the asset. You know, I think there's a, a very strong case to be made that it's it's not a just one and done, and, and there should be you know consistent flows following that up that that could lead to a sustained rally. What are your predictions if the ETF gets approved? Yeah, I think uh, you can you continue to see the Bitcoin dominance rally. So that's something we've been talking about a lot uh, in terms of, you know, the inflation story. You know, it's, it's important to remember Bitcoin and crypto is a global industry. About 80 plus percent of the trading activity occurs outside of the U.S. And so, you know, among that, you have positive developments coming out of the U.K., Switzerland, Japan, Hong Kong, Singapore, Dubai. Um, you know, inflation in, in places like the U.K. remains problematic and, and currencies rapidly develop, devaluing in China and, and Japan. And so it, there's a lot of reasons, you know, giving it such a global asset that, that people would turn to this. And, and uh, you know, there's, there's a need for a, a neutral store value, uh, you know, protection against monetary debasement. And so, you know, I think, I think we continue to see a little chop. The macro has been uh, quite supportive, uh, you know, with, with tech equities going to all time highs. But but I'd expect outperformance um, from from the crypto space, particularly Bitcoin, uh, on the back end of the ETF approval and and things like the GBTC and Grayscale assets. Uh, you'd expect those to to close up on the discount. You know, you brought up you brought up tech uh, and tech stocks. We're we're seeing still some 
uh, rising interest rates, obviously, from from the Fed and, and an attempt, at least, you know, he might say nice things about Bitcoin, but he is definitely not a big fan of inflation, Jay Powell. So is this, uh, you know, is this sort of, is the Fed's attempt to to uh, throw water on the economy uh, in many ways going to hurt the appetite for risk. Uh, are, are we going to see people say, look, you know what, the, the interest rates are too high for me to, to lever and to buy and to borrow to, to buy Bitcoin and, and other things. Uh, I, I'm not going to play in that. I'm going to step back. Are, are we going to start seeing uh, are more uh, people say, ah, this is just too much for me to handle. I, I, I don't want to take this risk right now. Yeah, I think uh, it's something I'm watching very closely. I would say, you know, the lowest hanging fruit on the inflation battle has been harvested. Uh, you know, we've seen oil come down all the way into into the 60s. The rest of the commodity complex has looked pretty weak. Copper um, and and a lot of other inflation indicators, you know, they're pointing to weakness ahead, or at least you know, a reduction from the levels we're at, which are still too high for, for the Fed's, uh, you know, what the Fed wants. So um, I think as long as the inflation numbers continue to trend in the way they're going, uh, I don't think I don't think the Fed actually, uh, you know, picks, picks hiking back up. I think they, they might be paused here um, with the caveat that, you know, if, if the commodity, commodity price environment, you know, stabilizes or, or kind of reverts higher, uh, you might get some inflationary pressures alongside, you know, dollar weakness, which would be, you know, opposite of, of what happened in 2022 and, and, you know, therefore kind of import inflation into the U.S. So I think it's a time to be a little cautious. We should start to get some clues over the next next few months here as, um, you know, some of these events get, you know, get chopped through. But, uh, you know, relative to those tech assets, I think, uh, you know, if, if I'm going to bet on one, it's going to be crypto. And Quinn, lastly, we took a look at the DeFi index at the top of the show. It's down about 4% today. What is your outlook on DeFi and altcoins amongst all of the celebration with Bitcoin? Yeah, uh, you know, so on that big Bitcoin dominance trend, you know, on-chain activity remains in quite a bearish trend. You know, you look at Ethereum, uh, you know, transactions and, and just across the ecosystem, there's still quite a quite a few head, headwinds, I would say, for for you know protocols and, and altcoins. So, you know that that Bitcoin dominance has run pretty strongly. Uh, been been talking about that since since the beginning of the year, and so I'm not saying now's a, a great time to to go long relative to alts. There's probably some mean reversion if Bitcoin does sustain a rally here. You're going to expect people to go further out the risk curve, um, but on the particularly on the back of an ETF and and uh, any sort of macro weakness uh, in the second half of the year, you'd expect alts to maybe you know continue the weakness. And you know it's 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 becoming more of a uh, bifurcated story where where it's not just all alts or uh, Bitcoin. You know, I think as the space develops, you want to focus on asset selection and and make sure you're um, you know all allocated appropriately, and uh, it's not just kind of you know one size fits all. Quinn, thank you very much for joining the show this morning. Yeah, thanks for having me. Take care, guys. That was Maple Head of Growth and Capital Markets, Quinn Thompson.